Things. This is Dr. Sharon Pepakai, Superintendent of Talbot County Public Schools. I have with me for this presentation Dr. Helga Einhorn, Assistant Superintendent for Teaching, Learning, and Leading, and Mrs. Sarah Jones, Chief Financial Officer. What you're about to see in the next slides for this presentation will be the story of our work, starting with strategic priorities, the four factors that were considered during our budget development, the main cost drivers that affect our budget requests, staffing needs, and capital requests. The Board of Education and myself did a deep dive into the Strive for 25 strategic plan, as well as the results of the climate survey from last spring to establish priorities for our work for the 23-24 school year. This slide shows the four priorities that were stamped. Academic equity and achievement in math, engaging environment for students and staff, recruitment, promotion, and retention of highly qualified and diverse staff, and meeting our blueprint objectives. On this slide, you could see the four factors that went into formulating the budget. Community survey, student enrollment, student performance, and blueprint objectives. The budget survey results are here on this slide. We survey our community slash taxpayers each year to gauge what they feel should be our priorities. This graph highlights the top three priorities from the survey respondents. The top two are aligned with our board priorities. You could see the first is around salary and professional learning for recruiting and retaining highly qualified diverse teachers and leaders. The second one, investing in additional resources to improve student achievement in math and reading. And the third priority was ensuring the highest level of safety and security at all TCPS buildings. The next factor is student enrollment, which includes pre-K. The student enrollment number averages the last three years of our enrollment, as we've seen a slight decline over the last few years. This slide that represents our special population shows increase in some of our special populations. For example, our special education population represents about 12%. Our students who qualify for free and reduced meals is 59%. Our English language learners make up 15%, totaling our 4,504 students overall for all of the students here at TCPS. You could see the trends over the last six years in the increasing of our students who qualify for free and reduced meals, English learners, and special ed. Our farm students grew from 45% in 2019 to 59% currently. Our EL, 9% to 16%, and our special education, 2% growth from 11 to 13%. Our third factor is student performance data. The Maryland Comprehensive Assessment Program, or MCAP, is given to students in grades three through high school. There was a slight increase in both, but we've set our post-pandemic baseline for the fall of 2023. So students are getting ready to take another wave of assessment, this Mar MCAT, and we will compare these results, which we don't get into the fall. We'll compare the results from our baseline to what they do this current year. Because of the lag in results for the state assessment, we give an internal assessment that you will see and hear about from Dr. Einhorn. English language arts specifically is on this slide, and you can see the comparison from 2022 to 2023. There were increases in most groups, but decreases with our Hispanic, English learners, and Asian students. The slide that shows how we are compared to the entire state is that we slightly are below the midpoint in English language arts proficiency for grades three through eight, 5% 5 lower than the state. We're up by 1.4% from the previous year. As a team, we're focused on achieving progress in student learning, which we hope to see reflected in this year's MCAP outcomes. The math slide here shows comparison 2022 to 2023, and it's broken down by our different demographic groups. This data that you see shows a decline in some subgroups 
but slight increases in others. Where we fall as a whole state, you could see our percentages is 18%. This has been a challenge for us, which is why it is one of our priorities. I can speak for the Board of Education, TCPS educators, our students, and their families in saying that our, although our percentage has improved by 2% from the previous year, these current results are unacceptable to us and remains a focus of our work. And finally, a factor for this for formulating this TCPS budget is the blueprint. The five blueprint pillars are listed here. Early childhood education, high quality and diverse teachers and leaders, college and career readiness pathways, resources to ensure all students are successful, and governance and accountability. The blueprint for Maryland's future was passed by the Maryland General, General Assembly in 2021 to transform form public education in the state. With these five pillars as a foundation, the plan seeks to enrich student experiences and accelerate student outcomes, as well as improve the quality of education for all children in Maryland, especially those who have been historically underserved. This is a slide that shows our budget request. 79,930,841. The chart summarizes the items that are included in the increase and the cost drivers for each one. While much of it is related to blueprint objectives, there are other factors beyond our control, such as inflation, retiree funding, and student needs. Mrs. Jones will expound on each of these items in the next slides. The budget increasing 7,880,475. Why are we requesting this increase? It is to continue essential work. Dr. Einhorn will share what essential work has been done and what we plan to continue under each of our priorities.